It's February 3rd, uh, Sakan Bilege Chimin, Chief of the Cabinet and Secretary of Mongolia, he joins us now for an exclusive interview around the desk with us here at the SGX. Sir, good morning. Great good to morning. see you and appreciate your time. So, I understand the Mongolian government is committed uh, to getting Oyotolgoi uh, or resolving the dispute by early next year, 2014, which means we're just months away. Are you optimistic that this can be done, A, and how are you going to achieve this? Yes, uh, we are quite optimistic about this issue. And uh, first of all, we separated all the Oyotoga issue from politics. You know, it's pure business decision and board members should sit around the table and make these pure business uh, solutions. And this is one thing. And next, the good thing also, the updated news for listeners or watchers for CNBC is that uh, in uh, mid of December, we expect a very high level uh, guests, uh, delegates from Rio Tinto coming to UB in Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, and we're going to finalize all this project financing issue and also second phase mid underground mid December. Ah. And uh, hopefully, we're going to also announce together that uh, we're going to announce timetable for next year when this project financing starts and also underground work in second phase going to start. And that's why after uh, adopting new investment law. And uh, we are trying uh, to keep this momentum, also feel it by very good chain of positive yes. events. And yeah. Oyotoko will be one of these positive events. You know, the problems with the Rio Tinto project, it's really scared a lot of investors, a lot of foreign investors away from Mongolia. They're worried about uh, corruption. They're worried about resource nationalism. They're worried about legal recourse. If something goes wrong, their investments are stuck there and they have no way of getting that money out again. What are you tackling first to lure people back? Uh, of course, uh, new investment law we're expecting is going to give big uh, confidence toward the investors any. Because we're no longer going to divide investors into local and foreign and all they will be uh, treated equally. And also when we ask the investors, uh, they ask from government, we need predictability. Mm -hmm. And that's why we address this issue first. And that's why if you want, you're going to give certification of stability from government. And uh, it starts from five years, uh, it's minimum, uh, it's depending on size of your investment, uh, ending with 22 and a half years. And that's why uh, this laws really give confidence. And also the most important third issue is that if you're going to change this law, you need two-thirds of all members of parliament, it makes it almost impossible to change uh, this investment mm -hmm. law. It also gives uh, quite good confidence. Mm -hmm. And now after we are tackling OT issue, and OT issue is not, you know, uh, 100 against zero issue. Of course, this, the, in real life, it's never been like that. And 50 against 50, maybe 60 against 40, and that's why we're sitting around the table, and there was 30 different issues together, Rio Tinto and OT. And now it decreased triple times, and I think in coming months we will uh, find all common language on That's encouraging to hear, Ash. It brings me to my question, which is how do you ensure that the resources revenue benefits the broader population and the broader economy? That's why there is no need to invent new bike, and uh, we learn from experience from other countries like Chile and Botswana or Norway, and that's why we're going to use our mining resources, this uh, new capital for development of country, and we will diversify our economy. It's mining is only one of these diversified economy. And yes, agriculture, our Kashmir, our meat and tourism, IT. There is a lot of sectors we but can do. You have a sovereign wealth fund, do you know? And that's why my next point is that using a, like Temasek tool, we're going to establish in our country also and approaching sovereign wealth fund. This is the ways of proper development of Mongolia. And that's why we're learning from Singapore. That's why we're learning from Hong Kong and other countries. And that's why uh, my president is paying visit to Singapore in these days. How do you price your, your mineral resources? They're so valuable and you're sitting on so much potential wealth there. But when you're negotiating with some of these big overseas companies who want to come in and invest, how 
are you, as, as a member of the government and, and, your, and your colleagues, how do you price it? What's the process? Tell us about because, that. Uh, somebody is, for example, there is the worry about commodity price right now. And that's why government is trying to see this problem not only in a couple years period of time. We are talking about 20 years period of time. And uh, last, just uh, two weeks ago, uh, my prime minister paid an official visit to China. And our uh, uh, private companies made agreement with Chinese companies that, for example, saving the uh, calls to 20 years from now till 1 billion tons. If this kind of agreement is also giving us some kind of confidence is that we have a longer period of time, we have a better profit. Uh, it's like win-win situation for both of us. And for example, also we're making big uh, projects on uh, from coal to gasification, also importing, uh, exporting it to China, mm -hmm. and also uh, new consumption of gas is also in place in our capital cities. Yeah, Minister, just very quickly, uh, tell us right now for Mongolia's development, what is your single greatest challenge? It's FDI. Getting yes, money in. and that's why this is the potential. We have very rich country with natural resources. And, oh, but uh, during the policies, in, during the last two, three years, we experienced this kind of problem. And now our behavior will become very smart enough. And that's why uh, everybody in my country is started to acknowledge that without FDI, without technology, without know-how, without good experiences, there is no way you can for the monetize your resources. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And that's why uh, if more uh, investors is coming to Mongolia, it's better. Because all you told me is it's only one of these potential 50 more projects in Mongolia. And that's why we need to kick off, uh, give them freedom to act. Mm -hmm. And that's why after all you told me, there is the town of a TT issue, very, very big uh, uh, coal deposit area. Mm -hmm. And we are also going to tackle and going to solve this problem. Minister, so if you could just clarify once more for me, uh, mid-December, that is the time frame where you believe both the government and Oyo Tolgoi will be able to strike a deal. Right after that, if you uh, permit, I hope we'll be again guest for you, studio and delivering this good news. Very good. And ultimately, by 2020, do you believe that the project will be contributing about a third is no of, doubt the, about of the broader economy? Yes, this is, there is still no doubt about it. And you know, it has become one of the indicators of our, how we're dealing with uh, foreign direct investments. And also, it is going to be an indicator how Mongolia is going to go right direction and also how uh, achievement is development we can achieve on this field and that's why there is no doubt that we will respect our agreement we will respect everything we have done with the uh, mm -hmm. and also we will move on and that's why project financing and also the second phase should be our place you, you know, time to your path in, in Mongolia has been quite similar to what Myanmar, Burma is going through right now. There's been a, a democratic revolution, um, comprehensive judicial reform. What advice would you give to the leaders of Myanmar right now as they embark on this path? Uh, the interesting thing is that uh, my president is very visit and he just uh, come back from Myanmar to Singapore. And we are also changing our experiences. But it's also good that comparing with uh, these countries, it's also good for us because we want to in front of them. And that's why we want to act as uh, uh, quick as possible. So, so what, mistake, what mistake you guys made that you would advise Myanmar to try to avoid? Uh, there's, you know, uh, because uh, going these two, between these two poles, you know, one time it's, everybody seems we can do all ourselves. We have too much resources. And why need foreigners' money? And now we're realizing another poll that without it we cannot do it. And this kind of shipment should be happen as less as possible. And and it, because it we pay a really big price for that. Uh, that Very uh, quickly, Minister, oh, isn't yeah. Mongolia ultimately too dependent on mining? What attempts are being made to diversify your economy? Yes, that's why we uh, diversifying policy is the most important issue right now. Because we're calling it rainbow policy. Because rainbow consists of seven color, and mining is only one of these seven color. And that's why we just mentioned about potential in other areas. Mm -hmm. And that's why the income from mining sector should be distributed uh, toward to these sectors and we should be not from supplier but also uh, good producer 
and the big potential. For example, the Italian companies come to us and we need to get you uh, raw Kashmir mm -hmm. and we need to renovate your current uh, factories and also half we want to get back to Italy for these big name brands. Excellent. And this sector is going to be from 500 million sector to 5 billion sector. Oh, and excellent. that's why this is the key of as you mentioned in the discussion of the company. Fantastic. Uh, Sir Block, leave it there. Great to talk to you. Thanks for dropping by. Come back to you soon. Thank you very much. Okay, we were talking to uh, Sakhandalika, Chair Chief of the Cabinet Secretary of Mongolia. And that's going to do it for this Tuesday edition of Squawk from Lee Street. Myself, thanks for watching. The call is up next.